So on this site, defont.com, you can actually type in, once you've started a search, and I just searched for, for hand handmade ones, you can type in your text and it will preview it for you. And pretty soon you'll get a sense of it. And I don't really love any of these for going with my poster. I want something kind of bold and kind of folk artish, but I don't want something kind of cartoonish. And I know I don't want something thin. This is pretty good though. So this is called hand form. And so once you find one that you think you might actually like, this is what I actually um, recommend, because I do this a lot, is take a screen grab of it, just so you know what that typeface is called. And you'll see why. So I can take a screen grab of this whole little block. And then I'm going to click download. And you don't have to join you don't have to create an account or anything. You can just download it directly. It's going to download onto your computer, usually as a zip file. So you have to go find it. So here it is. And then I'll show you how you load it into your computer. And it's very similar for a PC or for a Mac. So you first unzip it. So you have to know the name of it, which is why I do the screen grab if I save a lot of them. And then you're looking for either the OTF file or the TTF file. Double click on the TTF file and it will load it into your computer's font collection. So I just say install. And now under that name of hand form, I have this collection. Now notice how it's limited. There's no lowercase. The reason this is repeated twice is it's all uppercase and there's no special characters, right? Though there is at least an apostrophe. So now if I'm in a program like PhotoP, I can go to the text tool and type And just like in Photoshop, which I'll show you as well, when you use the type tool, the big T, it creates a new layer that's like a word processor and it gives you full control of the size, right? And I can type in something larger. And then it gives you the typeface options, right? Now, hand form was the Okay, so if I use the type tool and then I type what I want in, so similar to PhotoP, I have to find that, that type layer, right? Double click on it to get all the options here. So I can pick the color because it's a vector. Type is a vector. And I can pick the size. Uh, come on, work with me here. <laughs> That's a little annoying. It doesn't look like you're able to type it in. You're going to have to use those arrow keys within the vector program. Right, and then you can pick your, your typeface, though they mislabel it a font. And then you'll see the different fonts that are available for that typeface. So like italic is available. Oh, that's interesting. They can give you options for line weight. So these are the things you can play with, right? And then it will be a vector. And there's a lot of advantages to doing vector type. So let's say that this was the type I wanted, 
Eh, it's not even close to what I want. So let me find something that's closer. I don't see a way that you can load custom type into this vector program, unfortunately. But they have a lot built in. There probably is a way. But anyway, what I'm looking for, oh, that one's kind of nice. What I'm looking for is something I can customize. Because right now it's like a word program. And so I'm just looking for a vector I can use. So I'm actually going to delete everything else. And just save this type as a vector. It doesn't even matter how big it is. And I'm going to export it as an SVG. And it's going to be an untitled SVG that I download. OK. Let me open it up. And then this is what you can do on your own device. This is without using Illustrator or Photoshop. So let's see, the SVG, I'm going to try to bring that into photo P, see if it will let me. So here's my photo P. I'm going to try to open in place that SVG, see if it will let me, which is in my downloads. There it is, untitled SVG. Seems to think so, so far. Loading. Here it is. Is anything there? Return. OK, so unfortunately not. So what can you do with the SVG? Not a whole lot without Photoshop or Illustrator, because I can open it up in Illustrator and work with it. So what do you have to do? It's just annoying how do you, how you have to problem solve. So here is my text. What I need to do is make it really, really large. Because remember, it's a vector. You can make it any size you want. So the pixel dimension, and I wish you could see it by inches, but it's only going to be by pixels. You're just going to make this impossibly large. So I'm going to make it 6,000 pixels. And luckily, I can type here. And then save it as a PNG. Hopefully, that's not too big. You want it really big because you want it clean. And then that PNG is going to be high resolution you know, really clean, that then you can bring in to photo P. But honestly, there's not a whole lot of advantage if I'm doing only browser based ones to, to making that in the vector program and then bringing that in. So I want the untitled PNG and that will go right into to photo P. So basically, what am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you how you pick a typeface, you use a program to type it in and customize it, and then bring it in around your, your spot illustration. So how does this look in terms of what we're going to be producing? So if we go to assignment eight, We want to create black text just on its own in high resolution, right? 
we want to create a color version of that text. It's almost like its own spot illustration, right? And then we want to combine that text with a background and with our spot illustration to make a poster. Right. So for the spot illustration, I, I demonstrated the, the Putin on the Ritz crackers, right? So the text that was always meant to go along with that was this. Then you have the color version and then you have it with the spot illustration in the background to make a poster. Same thing here. You're customizing the type. You can play just like you colored your, your logo. You can play with different um, textures and embossing and color fills within um, Photo P or Photoshop. And then you're going to put it with your spot illustration on a background. All that good stuff. So the first thing you have to decide is what text you're going to have, and then you have to decide how you're going to block it with your illustration. So here it's actually running behind intentionally, which makes it kind of hard to read. This has two sets of type that go together. But then I decided at the end for the finished poster just to use one of them. So on and on and on. Now, we all have different tastes when it comes to typefaces. And my taste tends towards the handmade, uh, the more kind of letterpress, the more, um, you know, hand done, less mechanical looking type. So you can indulge your own, own sources for this and your own tastes. And that's where Defunct comes in. So one that I almost always search for is letterpress, which is an old form of, it's kind of the early printing press method where you have letter high type. And I tend to really like modifying from, from this kind of typeface, like Coco Goose is one I use quite a bit. I'm always hoping there'll be more letter for, letterpress versions. And there are typefaces that you can pay for as well, but there are plenty of free ones available. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is decide for my poster, what blocking do I want? Do I want this blocking? Do I want this blocking? Which I kind of played with already in Photo P. It's kind of very abrupt right over the, the face of it. Or do I want this kind of side blocking? And I think, just for clarity, I kind of like this. It's nice and simple. Though, this kind of convinces me that this might be interesting as well. So, I'm of two minds. There's an advantage here. I might actually go this route. Because this is in Photo P and it's a type tool in Photo P, remember that like the shape tools in Photoshop and like the type tools in Photoshop, this is already a vector. So that this is already vector type that then when I have it at the right resolution, I can rasterize and customize. So I'm going to do something similar. I think I will use this blocking. So I'm going to take a quick screen grab of this because this shows my blocking sketch. And the way I would complete this right in Photo P is I would bring in, I would say open in place, my finished spot illustration PNG from assignment seven. Which is this one. So my best spot illustration, right? So I kind of put it down right now it's image size. It comes in as a smart object. So it will, it will fit whatever resolution I choose as long as it doesn't go beyond its native resolution. And I want to check the image size. It's 10 by 10 by 350. 
So now I'm going to expand the canvas size to be a poster, right?